Hello, my name is Mona. Andrew, David, Andrew, and Listen up. And represent my country. Um, over the semester, we had different course readings from the book and other articles. Oh, sorry. I didn't hear it up here. I'm like, what are they doing? Yeah, I Yes. All right. I'll edit that out of the beginning. So please again, and very loudly, for those of us paying attention in the back, right? Uh, please project and uh, have some enthusiasm. <laughs> And shut your phones off so that this doesn't happen to you. All right. Okay, please. Try again. Is this in your way with your. Do you need this? I do this. Yeah. Right. We'll do that one. There you go. Thank you. So, hello. My name is Mona. This is Angel, David, Andrew, and Melissa. And we're going to present my pantry. Over the semester, we had different course readings from the book and other articles where they highlighted the importance, uh, the importance of creativity in the business world and how to find a creative way to solve an issue or problem. From our guest, uh, from our guest speakers, we also learned how that people started to pay more attention to food, health, and some environmental issues. Having that in mind, David and Melissa, on their individual uh, assignment, they presented a problem regarding storing food. So we wanted to expand on their idea, since we really thought that the food issue is very important to point out. David and Melissa aha moment. They were somehow connected. David and Melissa have a similar concept about food, about a problem, and how to solve that problem. So David, now I'm going to go and detail the thoughts of our presentation. Thank you, Mona. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, class, for uh, coming in and listening to our presentation. I just want to. I just want to apologize to our professor. We were going to uh, give you a little token of our appreciation for the semester. Uh, and it goes with our logo. I was, we we're going to give you an apple. Uh, we gave the responsibility to Enju. And of course, she screwed up. Uh, Enju kind of put it in the back of her fridge. She forgot about it. And when she opened it up to give it to you today, it spoiled. <laughs> if only there's a way she could get some sort of uh, device, something that could notify her that that apple was supposed to be for professor. The problem. <laughs> what NG, what NG experienced is not unlike other Americans. Um, according to the USDA, approximately $500 worth of food annually is wasted per household. $133 billion of food is wasted in the US. Two thirds of that is at the consumer level. All right, Americans waste food in their homes. And there has to be a better way to store and track your items. We don't organize it well. Um, I throw stuff in the fridge after I buy it. Then I look for the eye test. I go in, I try sorting through my roommate's food, my food, and eventually I forget about it, and it's moldy, it's gross, I can't eat it, it's a waste of money. And that's why I buy food, to save money rather than go out every day. I wish I could go out every day, but I can't, unfortunately not. Uh, our solution, my pantry solution, it's a creative new way to do things. So. Once you get home, you scan your groceries receipt, and uh, then the food is uploaded or the groceries are uploaded to your device. There, the expiration dates and uh, the food items are on your phone, and then you will be notified when your food's about to expire. To help you use that expired food, uh, recommend, we recommend recipes so you can use all the food you purchase. Next slide. So what does that do for the customers? It's going to save them two things, money and time. The money saved, not having to repurchase the food or uh, buy um, D, like cleaning supplies to clean your fridge all the, or the food you're going to be wasting, it saves a lot of money. The $500 statistic is real. Also time, the time and energy, let's go back to the slide, thank you. The time and energy spent, wasted on throwing out food, stressing about what you're going to eat three times a day is stressful. And if my pantry could take some of the stress off our customers, it'll make their lives better. All right, next slide. As far as our market goes, it's pretty huge considering everybody buys food, and almost everyone in the United States has a cell phone that can download apps. In fact, 71% of everyone in the United States has a cell phone. 
So you put those two together and you can get our total available market. But here in San Diego is where we want to focus. And so we have 140,000 prospects living in San Diego who are in between lower and middle class. You can actually download the app. We didn't want to really market towards the higher class because they have enough money where they don't really care if they spoil their food. Next slide, please. So our competition, of course, there is competition that I've tried this before. However, all the past competition hasn't been able to nail down the fact of scanning the receipts or actually having a stable application where it won't crash when you try and use it. As you can see, these are actual customer reviews from the app store of these apps right here. There's Fridge Pal, Prep and Pantry, Best Before, and Grocery Hero. <coughs> None of these have done the exact same thing that we're trying to do. We're trying to actually scan the receipt and automatically update you with a notification of your uh, foods going spoiled and stuff like that. So we thought now would be the perfect time to launch our app, My Pantry. About 38 million more smartphone users um, are in the world today. So we have a large audience that would be willing to purchase this app for us. And the price of living in San Diego is higher than the majority of other cities. So we don't have this $500 that we can just waste every year, especially if people are college and can't just afford $500 easily to waste on food. So now would be a perfect time to launch this app. Um, it would start off free and purchase a free purchase and then through advertisements of other grocery companies and different products, you would uh, that is how we would receive our profits. And then it would be a monthly $1 subscription that would eliminate the ads for you to use the product. Okay, so uh, throughout, throughout this project, uh, we learned how design thinking process plays a huge role in making creative and uh, innovative products like our My Pantry. Our team members were really able to connect uh, the dots by uh, breaking and making connections throughout the semester. Um, like we refer our ideas back to uh, what we learned from the lecture, course readings, and each exercise we did in class. Um, the pro pro problem we tried to solve um, is a very commonly shared problem, um, which means the food issue is universal. So it applies to everywhere in the world. It is something that is always going to be a problem, no matter where, what time you're living in, because we like the food and we need food, um, which means that it's all, there's always going to be a need of um, solving that problem. So finally, um, Mona, me, and um, he <laughs> really. <laughs> <laughs> Melissa were uh, willing to take um, their ideas to <laughs> to the next level by accept, accepting their uh, group, our group members' challenges and implementing the, or, their original ideas. So thank you guys and thank you. Thank you. Well, we'll be foregoing questions uh, in order to expedite this. Nice job. Uh, thank you so much. What the fuck? You have one job. Whoa, 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 wait, whoa. What's you? <laughs> I'm going to try and get this back a little farther. Yes, what? That's why you tweeted. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's me. <laughs> My free time. Some of them working a little bit on the side. <laughs> Thanks for your patience, Matt. <laughs> You know, looking at it afterwards, awesome. It's just trying to do it during. Yeah. Is that a hiccup?
So then who's next? <laughs> Professor? Yeah. Are we next then? Are we next then? Because you gave three to Who did I say is number three? No, 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 no. It's not who wants to be. Who did I say was number three? They're number three. And who did I say was number four? You're on your honor here. Hold on, we have the first five going. You us four. Oh, yeah, we'll All right, we'll do rock, scissors, and paper. Okay, you're five. So I know I told somebody four because I thought you were five. I thought you were two. I thought you were two. I just told you you were two before they showed up. Dude, I can't believe I've got stuff going on. All right, so you're on number three because you were supposed to be two. There you go. <laughs> Stay short. Alrighty. So I'm Andrea Lavinon. This is Amir Marino. I'm Stephanie Blakener. I'm Norman Bedarin. I'm Mariana. Nikki Filippi. And we are bringing you guys CECO. <clears throat> so daily we're surrounded by millions of bacteria that are potentially harmful, and we wondered where consumers were most likely to come in contact with such items. Uh, we concluded that restrooms, particularly toilets, were an area of concern. On average, there's an estimated 50 bacteria per square inch on a toilet seat, and approximately 3 million bacteria per square inch inside most toilet bowls. This is still less than your kitchen sponge, which has about 10 million bacteria per square inch. Um, while you can't catch STIs while visiting a public toilet, if you're at the right place, sitting on a toilet seat, at the right time when it's contaminated with feces and you do not properly wash your hands, there are a few infections you can pick up. These include E. coli, norovirus, Shigella infections, uh, and Salmonella, all which, as you <coughs> may know, produce very nasty gastrointestinal uh, side effects. Um, the less evasive uh, infections that you could potentially catch would include hepatitis A, strep, staph, and your cold and flu viruses. This is from either touching the toilet seat, trying to lift it, fix it, move it back, men and women type things, or even just the, uh, the toilet handle. So to reduce the contaminants, what you want to do is always flush when the lid is down, never when it is up, as that exacerbates the uh, bacteria process in your bathroom. Um, so for competition, we have a we have a hand device where you lift it from the seat, and we have a foot. Pedal. So these items can be found online, and they're not really seen anywhere else. Um, 
The hand lifted device is too much of a hassle. You have to like, bend down to reach it, and it's unsanitary. <coughs> and so for the foot pedal, you have to have your foot on the pedal at all times, and that's kind of a hassle too. Uh, there's also problems with foot pedal where it doesn't go all the way up, and there's no, it's not built for all sizes of the toilet, so that's why it doesn't happen. Uh, the manufacture of the device is relatively simple. It's a pedal that you step on, which is connected with a base that rests on the floor, and then a cable that connects the pedal to the arm that actually physically lifts um, the seat. Uh, we're planning on outsourcing to a manufacturer in China to cut costs, um, which will be low due to the outsourcing and the inexpensive components of the product, which will be made out of plastic. All right, so just touch on the fundamentals of what we're looking at here. Um, pretty much all you have to do is walk up to the toilet and it has the pedal accessible. Use your foot, push down on the pedal. Very simple. Uh, the cover and the seat will then lift, and then you don't have to use your own hands, obviously. And then the seat will slowly drop and you step on the pedal again. Uh, after your business is complete, simply just push the cover back down. And like I said, it's that simple. And now uh, we'll talk about marketing. All right, so the marketing is kind of difficult because uh, this is basically a new market. Uh, there is one competitor, but we know that they're not doing too well. And um, so uh, the reason that we need to make a new market is because people are content with complacency. And so basically, we need to change the way that people have been doing things. And so this can be kind of difficult at first. And so some of the things that we're going to do to change that is um, currently this is an untapped market with only one known competitor. So we're going to be you know, the main competitor and have a uh, bigger market share. Currently, it's only being sold online and not located at any major retailers. And as a result of this, we're going to be uh, not only using online, but also having displays that people can use because this is kind of a hands-on experience and people need to kind of get used to it uh, because we're going into the new market. Um, our ultimate goal is to have major retailers offer our products as an add-on. So basically, they'll give you an option, like if you want to have it, if you want to like pay a little extra to, hey, hey, you want this, you know, super easy accessible thing that we can add on when we ship you our toilet. Uh, and it's a luxury item that we will attempt to introduce. To uh, like I said before, we'll market it uh, not simply as an accessory, but as a necessity uh, for all toilets, thus changing the way people use toilets altogether. Um, some of the ways that we're going to kind of market it uh, as a necessity is by having commercials and advertisements that are going to emphasize the studies that report that the average toilet seat uh, contains 50 bacteria per square inch and other, you know, uh, as all she mentioned before, all the other problems that can happen with uh, contaminated toilet seats. And uh, these bacteria can get in your hands and spread to many other items around the house uh, and get things, uh, get on things you touch. So in conclusion, the seat pedal is a new product that will re revolutionize the bathroom experience. For many years, people were using trash cans with lids, simply taking the lids off their hands. Um, tying this back to design thinking where that's kind of where inspiration came from. You see that before, trash cans were just lifting the lid off with your hands, causing bacteria to get on your hands, and people have come up with the pedals that automatically open. So coming from that, we got the inspiration to why don't we apply that to toilets? It's the same bacteria, people are often lifting it just for their preferences, so why don't we create one that eliminates getting bacteria on their hand? As um, also a conclusion, the product already exists and simply a proof of concept. With our product, we're going to eliminate and learn from our failures. That's kind of where the ideation comes in. We brainstorm our ideas. We see what things are going to fail, what things we can improve on, what our competitors have, what they have failed on, and grow upon that so we can make a better product. Um, also, the importance of our product as we enter, we can, with again, the implementation, as we have an, an innovative product, a newer product, something different that will catch people's um, attention will great, uh, create a more better market share and um, greater consumer use. So say goodbye to all your rough times, guys. <laughs> and cheers to the seat pedal. <laughs> <laughs>
anything over. So, Are you guys listening up? And your product. Okay. Okay, I'll just sit here and watch Hello, everyone. How are we all doing? Great. Excellent. We are Function Incorporated, and I, myself, Maxwell Schweiger, and my associates, David Armstrong, Bailey Ewing, Valdivia Heredia, Brad Benke, Molly Johnson, are all in for Function Incorporated. And here at Function Incorporated, what we do is we find products and find reasons on why we can make them more functional. So today, for example, we're going to display one of our products, which is it's the Camp Pack 5000. <laughs> so, what the Camp Pack 5000 is? It's an all in one camping backpack. You got your backpack, it's your camel pack, you got your fishing pole. It also has an overhead umbrella slash shade that'll keep you out of the rain or out of the sun. So, you got five of these functions, which will give you thousands of opportunities. And now we're going to move into a little skit to show you what life is before the Camp Pack 5000. <laughs> So how was your trip in Yellowstone? Well, it started out fun the first day. The scenery was amazing. We did some amazing hikes that led us to some amazing waterfalls and some amazingly exclusive areas. But I left my tent, my tent where we made camp, and uh, I was forced to share with Frank, who's terrible at sharing. Oh, believe me, I know. I lived with him for three years. That's right. Uh, you know, Frank's a funny guy, but I don't think I could do another full weekend camping with him again. Sharing a tent with him was just about the ter the most terrifying thing, and uh, probably about as terrifying as sleeping in the woods alone, honestly. Uh, I kept waking up thinking I heard a bear, but in reality, it was just Frank snoring. <laughs> Freeze. All right, so now, when you can't pack 5,000, you can never forget your tent, because the tent is literally attached to your backpack. The only way to be able to forget the tent is you forget your entire backpack. Well, let's see if this is going to be even worse. So was this the only thing that happened in your camping trip? This is just the beginning of this awful trip. Uh, it was so hot. I mean, waking up at 80, 30 when the sun rises, uh, it was pretty brutal. And add the 90 degree, 90 degree weather on top of that, it was just tough. I wish I had an umbrella hat with me, honestly. I've never seen one of those. What is that? That's a hat that acts like an umbrella but sits on your head. Uh, you know what would have been really nice? If I had one of those attached to my damn backpack. And my water was about 100 degrees as well. Yeah, that's the worst. I mean, clothes are such a pain to carry around. Freeze! <laughs> All right, so with the Camp Pack 5000, those days will never be cooler. We have the overhead, we have the overhead uh, shader, which also doubles as a umbrella, which keeps you out of the rain or out of the sun. So, and also there is an insulated pocket that you can put your camel pack into, which would keep it cold on those really hot days. Could anything else have gone wrong in this situation? Let's find out. So did you do catch on the fish on your hike? Well, on one of our hikes, we were right on the river, and the trout were jumping like crazy. Uh, but, on to but to top off the terrible trip, who forgot their pole back at camp? Me. I wish I had something to catch them with. Oh, yeah. Fresh fish is one of my favorite parts about hiking. But bringing a pole, always a pain. I know. Carrying such a long pole can be so inconvenient. <laughs> and honestly, it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> 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 Ever caught in a situation where you want to catch fish, but you can't because you left the pole behind? Never again. <laughs> For the Camp Pack 5000, the tent pole acts as, also acts as a fishing pole. All you have to do is attach the reel to it, string it through the line, and you're catching fish. All right. 
So though this was just a skit, the dangers of the outdoors are very real. Um, the Camp Act 5000 is precisely what you guys will need, protecting you from the heat, weather, starvation, in one convenient package. So which, which was our inspiration um, that we come up with this product. So most people go camping to escape um, and disconnect with their world, um, which we agree with greatly, but you don't have to leave out all types of technology, such as making your gear more functional. So just so we don't forget, we have one more slide. <laughs> the aha moment was of the opportunity that there is no all-in-one camping backpack. You have to keep everything, you have to pack it all up, you got to make sure you don't forget all these things, and there's no market at, at all for this type of, this type of product. Um, we think that this would be a great product for anyone that's really into camping and wants to escape out there and, and whatnot. So we're going to have a... Uh, Finish it up. So just to recap, if you ever hiking trails and the clouds hunt you down, don't be unprepared. Camp Pack 5000 has you covered with the sunshade to keep you out of the heat and the weather. If the thirst is real at high elevations, you've got to stay hydrated and you can't lose your cool. To get the Camp Pack 5000, it keeps your water safe and cold in an insulated pocket. And camping with friends is great, but camping with your fishing pole is a bona fide must. Don't leave your poles behind. Camp Pack 5000 equips your poles and keeps them secure to your back. Don't get stuck in the boonies with Frank. He can't even share. Get a camp back 5,000. <laughs> when do they go on sale? Yeah, coming in summer 2016. <laughs> All right, so I assume you girls are nice. Yeah. And then we do Thunderdome for the next, right? So when you want to challenge somebody, I see Thunderdome. Two two men enter, one man leave. Great rental. Great rental. Mel Gibson. Anybody ever hear of Mel Gibson? Mel Gibson or want to be next? All right. Let's try. If I may, you also like science or nothing? <laughs> Are you using the uh, projector at all? Or you can go back and watch the same video. They look like they know what they're doing. Are you using the PowerPoint? Are you using the PowerPoint? Are you using the PowerPoint? Are the first the first time I have the second time <laughs> <laughs> I 
Caramelized coffee with two espresso shots, soy milk, one split them, make sure it's one, and um, light ice. I really don't like when ice melts. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so that was
So uh, when designing this map, we used uh, like a human-centered ethos design-driven idea. We made and made connections, considering what consumers like and dislike about current products, um, previous products, what they want, what they need, like the comparison between necessities, um, and decided that creating, creating this will create a real necessity and a new industry around the product. And the only competitor who was really fine was the Apple Watch. But as you know, a lot of the Apple Watch is basically like an iPhone on your wrist, except for you know maybe some texting devices. So Life Inc. it offers a health tracker, and it can also um, work as like a key, and it's easy to go ahead and pay. And there's solar charge. The only similarity they have is maybe the fitness tracker and the compatibility of using it uh, with an app on your phone. All right, so the fitness tracker is kind of a duplicate of what many of you already know. Maybe you have the Fitbit. Um, it tracks steps, calories, active minutes, and sleep, your sleep activity. So um, as you can see on here, this is how it would pull up on your phone where you can manage. Um, like, for example, on our skit when she said, well, how much is it going to take me to work this off? You'd be able to tell that instantly on here. So that's the first feature. And then there's also a health feature. And what this does is it tracks your vitals, like your blood pressure, um, the amount of sugar in your blood. This is really good if you have heart issues or diabetes. Um, it also gives you alerts. How many of you were not drinking last night? Maybe two. OK. <laughs> Maybe like after your 10th shot, it'll give you like a little, <laughs> give you a little alert. And then like, hey, you take the lemon, you're about to pass out. You're super dehydrated. Um, and then it also keeps you healthy because it keeps track of the amount of minerals and vitamins in your blood system, so it'll tell you, oh, you need to eat more um, vegetables or fruits. Um, we will eliminate cash because the only thing you need to, to pay for anything you want is to scan, scan your pay pass that you have in your bracelet. You can pay for whatever. And it's a, te a technology that is used in Australia and other countries, and it works really well. You'll also be able to enjoy the access pass with LifeLink, and this feature has keyless access and user identification. With keyless access, you'll be able to unlock your car and your home with just like sensor proximity, so as you approach it, it'll unlock it. And you will also be able, be able to use the user identification, which is the same thing. You'll be able to access all your devices just by being um, close to it. So that will also enhance security because it won't be as easy to hack into your computer so you won't need a code or anything. So you can say goodbye to like hassling with your keys, not knowing where they are, you know, locking your keys in your car. And with the My Life Inc. tracker, you'll be able to track all this all on your app. So you can also unlock or lock through the app. Hi, how are you doing? Welcome to Starbucks. Can I just get a frappuccino, please? Sure. I'm feeling so fantastic today. I've already got my 10,000 steps done. My blood oxygen levels are perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and don't have anything on me. Look at you. Well, is that going to be cash or card? Oh, don't be silly. I have my life incorporated. <laughs> Thank you. 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 Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 no. Uh, no. Uh, 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 Who's next? Right, right. Uh, no, uh, first. Uh, 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 Thank you. Where's the first mission? Can I plug my, my computer? Oh, here you go. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. So, maybe it'll open this. Great. Thank you. Thank you. 
Are you doing all that paperwork over there? Making me nervous, kid. I'll put it in the last And then we'll see the jackpot. Yeah. Hi class. All right, we're here from GeoSkills. Uh, so my name is Aladdin. My name is Nicholas. I'm Park. I'm Michelle. Chanel. All right. So what is GeoSkill? Have you ever had an idea that you wanted to uh, develop, <laughs> uh, but you didn't have the required skills or the skill sets? So how did you go with that idea? Did you learn it yourself, or did you post uh, post on Facebook? Searching with someone and how effective was that? Most of the time, it's not very effective. So what we have done, we have uh, made a platform, an online platform, uh, that would let you search for people with the desired skill sets that you're looking for. So like I'm sure at like, some point in our lives, we all had a great idea, but we didn't follow through on it just because, first, we didn't know what to do, or we didn't know where to find the people that could help us actually develop that idea and bring it to market. Like today on the presentations on my pantry, we all think that's a great idea. Uh, was it how hard was for you guys to find somebody to develop your application or to help on you in the process? I'm actually still trying to find someone, and it's very difficult to find reliable people. See, I think that's awesome. Like I see, I think I have a solution here for you because we just built the website, this application where you can go online and you can actually find somebody with the skills you need that can help you develop your your product. We're just going to show a little video of how it works just to make it easier for you guys to understand. Um, that's right there. Did you guys think of today's jam session? Anyway? I think it was all right. It could be better. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like our, our sound isn't really complete. Like, yeah. Neil, how do you feel on drums? I feel like it's not really my place to play drums. You get excel, maybe a guitar. Yeah. Something different. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well. So what we have here is like. The aha moment we had to build this application it was when our CEO, Ivan, was trying to find a new drummer for his band, and he was having issues. He had those three guys with him. They knew a few drummers, but they weren't as good as they needed the guy to be, and they were struggling on how to find it, so they went on the, uh, on the website, they went on the application, and they were able to, to find somebody. So this is our homepage. Um, our main goal is to make it as accessible and straightforward as possible, so you can find the right people with the right skills um, to share your ideas and make them into reality. 
And we also um, want to make sure that it's from, there's a variety of people from amateur talents to your music icons. And a bunch of professions, it doesn't have to be music, or sorry, musicians or artists. It can be entrepreneurs or other professions like engineers. So this is how our platform works. So Ivan is looking for a drummer, so you just type drummer, where, well, the area he wants to, and then it gives you like a relative idea of where are the nearest drummers. And um, and then he chose Gerardo Piña. And in, on his profile, you're able to see like what type of music he likes uh, on Spotify. It connects also to SoundCloud and uh, where he can upload uh, his music and then also connects to Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube and kind of like the idea of where can you find him. So basically uh, based on your different skills, you can connect your you can to you can add to your portfolio a variety of, of different platforms. For so for musicians, for example, uh, SoundCloud and Spotify are, are the best options. But if you're a graphic designer, for example, you can add, you can connect Behance or you can you can take basically anything, you can add videos from there, you can have your photos and your illustrations, for example. Cool. And if for some reason you don't want to like connect to Facebook, Twitter, or YouTube, like you can actually contact the person online, so you don't have to um, share more information about you, and then you get to meet them. So here is uh, um, how it worked for Ivan to find a new drummer after using the service. dark <laughs> <laughs> drummer. As you guys could see here, it was really easy to use the application to go online and find the guy. And they were actually able to find the perfect pick for them. We've been playing together now and doing a lot of poems to draw down. Yeah, so <clears throat> pretty much the concept we have here is a social networking reverse. The reason why it's reverse is because you know social networks have you staying on their website and you know using getting connecting with people. But are you really connecting, or you know are you just on the media and not really you know getting that person to person feel? So it's set social networking reverse in the sense that you connect with that person. And then you meet with them, and then you work on a project that you want to work on, or you know that will be your candidate for your band, or something like that. And so, obviously, for our uh, platform to work, is that we need to get as many people to sign up as possible. So that's why it's completely free to use. So you may ask, how do we make money then? So uh, to answer that question, we created the platform, which is called GeoScale Ads, and it's mainly targeted for local and small businesses who can then target people in a very specific area. So for example, here, uh, if, if you're connected, for example, I have a music shop in, in San Diego, uh, which is called Guitar uh, Center. Uh, and so I can create a, com a campaign, uh, an advertising campaign from that website, and, and just put a, my budget, uh, specify my, uh, my target market. So say I want to reach people in San Diego only or other years. Do I want to target male or female? And then, uh, and then I can I can create from the web, from the platform. I can design my ad as you can see here. And then the platform gives uh, based on your criteria, it gives you an estimate of the number of impressions of your ad per month, and then the estimated uh, click through rate. And the reason the reason why we think we can have a higher click through rate than than other uh, platforms is that it's 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 really targeted. So that means. When you, when you look for a drummer in San Diego, you're very likely to, to be looking for music shops in San Diego as well. So it's it's more targeted than Facebook ads or Google ads, and, and so that's why the click-through rate will be will be higher, which means as an advertiser or local business, you can, you can reach more people and grow your business. So here you can see uh, with the ads, uh, so if Ivan is looking for uh, the, the same drummer in San Diego, at the top of the search results, you can see uh, the ad of that local advertiser. And that's how we make, we're going to make money out of the service. All right, so our design thinking approach was pretty similar uh, to the design thinking approach that we studied here in class. So, But we kind of modified it in a way that uh, we have to find inspiration and passion first for what we're doing, because otherwise you're not going to have that intrinsic motivation to move on. And then the idea generation uh, level is like, you know, you're rapidly generating ideas. 
of what you're really passionate about. So one of the first things we talked about, uh, me and my colleagues, was uh, we like going out. We, we like meeting new people. We like you know uh, making new connections. And that's what the concept is about. And then you move on to concept development where you're actually working on the project. But through all these stages, you have to be in constant review of your uh, other considerations and options. You know, and you may always make sure that uh, you know you're always, always considerate of what's going on. So in our case, we made the platform usable for all kinds of skill skills and all kinds of people that you know would enjoy using it. Yes. So uh, next time you have a good idea, please don't give up on it. Geoskin is out there to help you develop it. So please come out and on the website and check us out. Any questions? Thank you. You had a question? You just want to go next? Uh, wait, 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 wait. Did I tell you you could go next? All right. You can go after that. Because I don't think I told you. Wait, I told you next? KB, man. KB. Are you guys waiting in the queue? Well, listen, you just tied it. Hold on, hold on. All right. Guys, please put it. I've got a lot going on in trying to get it. All right. If I told you to go to Spies, that was my effort of trying to get you in that spot. So, did I? Sometimes we switch. All right, Roxas, <laughs> you email me? Okay, Roxas was paid for. We're going to run it. Best of three between the two groups you can get that. I say a lot of things. This is like a parent. Who's like two of us to go? No, Looks like there's a skit in action here. Let's see if I can't be more inconvenient to you and get my camera a little closer. Thank you for your patience. yeah, uh, he, he's in the middle of the uh, I mean, the boss Yeah, like a lot of people are trying to look at the I go back and watch it. I had a different Look more and more Hopefully, it's French, but I my name's Alan Cooper. We're from the LA Demers. Uh, I was asking my group from the lady who texted me like five minutes ago. Sorry, 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 sorry. I was like, on, I'm coming up here, and I just totally, there was a car that pulled in front of me, and I stopped, and then someone didn't see me, and I ended up getting rear ended. I'm so sorry. Got an accident? Yeah, they, they, I, I slammed on my brakes, and I was fine, and all of a sudden, boom, hit me. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a big problem. There's about 2.5 million rear end accidents per year, and this results in millions of dollars, in, uh, millions of dollars in damages, whether it's private, uh, public property, and then there's also damages that occur to people. People get injured. What do we need? We were trying to think of a couple of different ideas. You can't really make people slow down. People are going to go fast. People are going to go over the speed limit. You can't really do that. You know, it's kind of hard to make the roadways safer. Whether it's you know expanding lanes, making more lanes whether it's having safety things that come along. really can't do that either because that's controlled by the private sector. What we figured we could do was help make an improved brake light 
this will really help people just be more alert when it comes to on um, either on the freeways or just on the regular inner city roads. So our solution was to make a brake light that becomes brighter based on the pressure you apply when you're using a brake. So for example, if I'm on the freeway and there's a huge accident that comes up and I slam on my brakes, my light's going to be super bright. So all the people behind me, even if they're maybe not looking straight ahead, if they're looking off to the side or looking down at their phone, they'll be able to see that light brighter than they would just a regular light. Okay, so first, what is design thinking? You got to think of it as a designer. You want to create something that people want and that people need. Um, it's a human-centered approach to innovation. It's something that can be technolog technologically feasible, and it can be a business strategy, um, bringing added value to customers and the market for an opportunity. The process of design thinking is three main things. Um, you have a cycle of inspiration, ideation, and implementation. So how it first worked is uh, I got inspired. I was actually in traffic. I was drinking coffee, and the same thing happened. And I saw someone breaking in front of me. I didn't know how hard they were breaking. I slammed on my brakes, and it turns out they were just tapping on the brakes. I spilled the coffee all over me, and that inspired me to come up with an idea. With an idea. <laughs> I didn't, so I didn't think. I didn't think like it was my fault. I just thought, oh, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be something better. So that's why I come up with the idea of the brake light that uh, it becomes brighter. Next. Okay, so implementation. First, what we wanted to do is we want to connect with the Zon Center. Um, we wanted to get our idea out there to help bring our product to the market. But we first knew actually, we can't let him do this alone. We got to build the team. Team consists of at least five things. We need an engineer to actually design the product. We need a lawyer to get our product patented. We need a manufacturer to actually make the product. And then we're going to build a website. And with that website, we're going to make our sales initially, just starting off. So we had to make some iterations to our original plan. We were actually denied from the Zon Innovation Center, so we weren't able to partner with them at this time. Um, and then our first idea was to sell this as an aftermarket product to consumers. Um, and then we realized that consumers don't necessarily want to pay more to add things onto their car after they've already purchased it. They want their car to come with everything when they buy it. Um, so we also had an idea of going to the Department of Transportation and kind of trying to make this a law, so to require every car to have one of these brake lights. Um, and if we did that, we would have been able to transform the whole industry. Um, but we decided that we aren't large enough and we probably couldn't kill that at the moment. So we went back to our original idea of selling it as an aftermarket product and then um, we decided to instead sell it to car manufacturers. Um, one such as Kia, so a lot of car manufacturers now are making cars drive themselves, so this wouldn't necessarily be something that they look for a customer buying that car with the Ford because the car would be deemed safer. Um, and so car, or car manufacturers like Kia, <laughs> we would target, and then, so that would, the car, or it would just be an added feature, so when you're in the, at the car dealership buying your car, you can choose to have this on there, um, and that would drive Customers to get the product. So I, I decided to do a little quick break unit analysis uh, with going one of the routes we go ahead, did. Uh, this is for the aftermarket. If we were to decide to sell our product as an aftermarket product, um, I talked to a few, like, researched a few e-lancers, and for research and design, it cost $15,000, uh, appropriating ourselves $12,000 each, their salary for a year. Um, website would be $2,000 or $1,020 per month. Ended up becoming uh, a break-even analysis would be 3,593 units to break-even. And uh, coming going back to that first stat of those 2.5 million rear accidents per year, I definitely feel like it's going to be feasible. Um, so yeah, that's <laughs> feasible, guys, for this. Thank you. Go ahead. I don't know. I think it might have been. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, when you started, no? Yeah, they played terrible. It sucked. They're probably going to be up there. Huh? They're probably going to be up there. I hope so. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
Well, yeah, me. Uh, you'll be famous. You're on YouTube. Oh, All right, everybody. <laughs> All right. So, have you ever received an urgent phone call advising you that someone you love has been rushed to the hospital? Fear takes over, panic sets in, questions arise, and waiting ensues. So why not simplify this stressful situation with an application called Follow My Health Plus? So what is Follow My Health Plus? It's an online patient portal which provides anywhere, anytime access to health information about you or a loved one. It enables you to take a proactive role in managing yours or someone else's care. It's an app that can link up with any healthcare organization or physician using the software. And it's available online 24 hours a day, 7 days a week via any internet, capable computer, tablet, or smartphone. So what inspired this idea? The main purpose behind the idea of this application is to help resolve a problem I personally ran into. So I recognized an opportunity when my mom was rushed to the emergency room due to a life-threatening infection, which was completely out of the blue. So one day she was fine, the next day she was completely incapable of even basic motor functions. So I had no idea what to do or how to make sense of all the information being presented to me. And there were so many questions that arose for me that I needed help not only to organize all the information, but also make sense of it. Because I work and go to school full time, I was inspired to create a tool that would bring comfort knowing that when I do not have the ability to be present in person, I can always be up to date on the latest information available regarding my loved one. So some of the basic functions of the app, you can review your medical records on the app in a safe and secure environment. You can communicate privately with physicians via secure messaging. You can view test and lab results read medical notes from your doctor and request prescription refills. You can schedule and change your appointments and you can fill out and submit forms prior to your appointment. Some of the special features for emergencies, you can have a family friend login, there's a reliable medical search engine, there's a patient locator, there's a live camera feed and it also provides parking updates. Cool, so uh, pretty much in a more in an ever connected world, we want to kind of connect people in times of uncertainty. Um, so that's kind of why we're going to add in the aspect of family and friend login so that they can keep an eye on your status. Um, we're going to do something similar to like what Venmo did with the trust factor. Um, so it's going to be a two-way party connecting basically. So your stuff will still be considered private and then you can open it up to people who you want to. Um, that way designated family members can kind of also help can take some control in the situation. Um, and then that's going to allow us to try to at least help eliminate some uncertainty and uh, nervousness in the time of, you know, um, in tough times. And then that feature is going to be for situations where uh, users are unable to communicate. You know, if they're in the hospital, that's not going to be their first concern is to be able to be able to reach family members. So just by the doctors doing that and updating everybody, it should um, kind of improve efficiency in that regard. Um, and then what we're going to try to do is eliminate all the question marks that come with like IMDB or whatever it is, uh, you know, or someone has a headache and they think they have cancer. Um, so we're going to try to come up with a reliable search engine, um, basically that's very centralized and reliable, uh, where you can find out tips and how to best deal with these situations um, based off of doctor's notes and people who've already gone through similar stuff. So the next feature that we will have is the patient locator. And this will allow patients to be located anywhere within the hospital premises. Uh, the patients, patients will show up on a map that will be interfaced with the application. And it will give the uh, users um, information as to where exactly the patient is at any given moment, along with directions on how to find them. This will also link up with the patient's vital signs, which will be displayed in this feature. This feature is especially helpful when patients may be sent off for a scan, test, procedure, or even if their room was moved without notice and their family has no way of finding them. The next feature will be a live camera feed, and this will give the patient constant communication with the outside world. Uh, in addition to this, it will allow patients to visit and communicate with those who are either out of town or with busy schedules that you can't fly in to see them. Uh, the last part about this will be that it allows around-the-clock monitoring and care for those who may be incapacitated. 
And then the last feature that we're going to have is our parking services. Um, majority of times that when we go to the doctors, we tend to have parking issues where we have to pay some kind of fee when we just have to only think from fine. So you, this application will provide um, areas that you can park, that, depending if it's get to charge or not. Have like some kind of sensor, but if you're wondering like how the hell do they do that, but then um, you'll have uh, sensors that show availability. And then there'll be less time driving around and more time being able to find you know, the loved ones or if you need to get to the doctor coming on time. And then um, this application is effective because it puts you guys first. And that's all that matters. And you know, there are other help applications that are out there that you know it's pretty much have kind of the same idea, but this one would be the most user friendly. Um, this has a lot of information and a lot of very helpful in like the search engine being able to figure out what systems you guys to have. You can reach out to your doctors uh, if you need to, and then it helps you know during the most stressful times. So like sometimes uh, you know when you go you, you went to rush in there or when you know situations happen like your grandma's in the hospital or she's about to die. There's situations that we all come across that just puts us under stress, but they will help alleviate it. Uh, most of the source of communication to uh, it will it will be provided to patients and like for instance like telling you like how your doctor's visit was or what kinds of um, things to look out for. So um, this healthcare app will provide a third party interaction with use of commissions. Now um, how we're gonna play into design uh, thinking was you know Brianna did talk about the um, three uh, which we'll bring up the three eyes which is the inspiration and then we're brainstorming the idea of the application, which is ideation, and then finally is the most important part, which is implementation. Now, most applications that we use these days is 90% of the time, these applications you just stop using after six months. So after that, you're just like, oh, it's a boring app. Like I'm sure you guys all have the application that used to bench the week. So that's the issue that we are gonna like <coughs> have to encounter. And using design thinking, we need to uh, be able to figure out how we can get users to get back to this application, how we can get them to use it consistently. So we're, we did try, we're going to try and design this application in such a way that it provides a consistent and recurring use. So by doing that, in fact, we're going to enable like the application saying, hey, you should get a health checkup, or hey, you should really visit the doctor in case you could be diagnosed with this. We're going to provide updates and feedback from the doctors to um, the users. And then uh, most of all, like applications, you know, between you and, the, uh, and your phone, we want a two-way communication. So a lot of people want, you know, answers. They want to have questions that they have personal one-on-one -on -one use. So having this application will get them access to the doctors and to any of the hospitals that are available. So, you know, we want to remind users why this is important to them, because number one, your health is important. We all want to live till we're like 100 years old, so we got to take care of our bodies now. So, any questions? Oh, man, you were like the last one here today, man. I'm sorry. You said she has a new guy after us. So I'm going to do my best to find my team. I'm going to do my team. I'm going to do my team. I'm going to do my team. I'm going to Yeah, I have to. I got it. No, I have to. I got it. No, I did. Oops, it's this way. 
autofocus camera only works if it focuses. Okay. 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 <laughs> oh my god, I will untangle my earphone in two hours. <laughs> so that's one of my biggest pet peeves whenever I go to listen to music, if I'm going on a run or studying or something like that, and I see that they're in this huge mess of a tangle. It's just one of the most frustrating moments of my life. Um, so we developed a product called Wide Buds that we think will solve the, the problem. Okay, so about the product, um, Wide Buds, it'll be a wireless earphone. It'll connect wirelessly via Bluetooth to your smartphone or music player device, and it will be able to pair to up to three devices. So you wouldn't have to use Bluetooth again for that same device. The problem we developed this product, and we started thinking about the problems that typically occur with the wired earphones such as the nodding, you know, the cable rips causing you to turn, causing you to purchase a new pair constantly. So we use creativity to find a common problem and think of a creative solution. And uh, thanks to the above steps, we were able to come up with the idea of why buds. Um, our intrinsic motivation was to create a product that would be able to make a lot of money, but intrinsically we wanted to develop a superior alternative in the wireless headphone market, and in doing so create a satisfied customer base. Um, after we understood the motivation behind our product, we had to achieve a collaborative creative climate. Um, I'm not creative by nature, but our group worked well as a whole drawing of samples and producing add-ons until we had a product that we were happy with. Um, once we had something that was that was practical, we used diversity and asked people how they thought what they thought about our headphones. Or no, what they thought about headphones in general, both wired and wireless. Um, we asked multiple people if they had to build their own earphones, how they would do it, and the results were pretty much in line with what our vision was. Um, lastly came the evaluation stage. We gathered friends and peers for an evaluation of this potential product. Although most saw positive benefits, we also received negative feedback due to the competition that already exists in the market, but that only helped us to continue to innovate a better product. Um, from the article that we read in the beginning of the semester, the author sums up our approach to design thinking. He says that problems require a human-centered, creative, and practical approach to finding the best ideas and ultimate solutions. Design thinking is just such a such an approach to innovation. Um, specifically through our design process, the inspiration stage of our design thinking was our biggest challenge. We wanted to create a product that solved the problem, even if that problem wasn't an overwhelming one. We realized that people were tired of headphone cords breaking and having to pay 30 bucks for new ones or upwards of 100 for an expensive wireless pair. Um, once we got our initial idea together, though, the brainstorming and finishing touches came together pretty easily. Uh, in the end, our goal was to create a our goal or our creative mission statement was to design a product to meet people's earphone needs while being technologically feasible and by executing a viable business strategy that can convert customer value into an advantageous market opportunity. How we could use it? Actually, our manufacturer strategy is that keep the lowest cost and make sure the high quality production. So first, we're going to look at Alibaba. We're trying to find the lowest cost from China. And then we narrowed down the location to Shenzhen, China, because they have the best place for outsourcing the electronic stuff. Okay, so for the budget plan, uh, through further research, we figured that it would be around $50 per unit due to the fact that it's so small and compact. And for the profit, we priced them at around 200 each. So we have a first run production of 10,000 units. So we'd make a profit of around $150 for each unit. At uh, 10,000 units, we'd make a grand total of 1.5 million profit. Okay, for our competition, you now we have Apple, B. So even though they offer the similar, you know, quality of earphone, even uh, for example, like uh, B, they have a wireless earphone, 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 but they, they have some connection to the back. But our product is like there's no nothing, just like. Basically, just airbag. So there's no uh, such product available in core market. Also, our uh, target market is the people with uh, people in the game, athlete, because they need a portable stuff 
also the generation Y and the early adopters. So for our competitive advantage is, is like you can listen to music in anywhere you want because it's portable and uh, you can connect any device you want like your your uh, your car or your cell phone and uh, also we have a, a noisy solution design just make sure it's block the noisy and then we we try to our make our product like the music quality sounds like more like hip hop like so it could be like more motivates for the gym people. So for our potential market, the 40% of people they come uh, they they connect music during the workout and they complain because they're so aware. So it's make like uncommunity and uh, also the <coughs> internationally we believe that there's a very high uh, high tech customer demand, especially from emerging country like like China, Turkey, or India. So also we manufacture in China, so why not? And uh, also from the report research, there's 24% growth from uh, 2013 to 2016, so we believe that's a huge market um, For our distribution plan, it's pretty simple. You start with some centralized production and marketing, and then we break off into two distribution channels. The first being online, so we would do contests, sell through our own website, through blogs and advertising. And then secondly, it would be retail, like the Apple Store, tech stores, and uh, also concerts and events. So looking at it a little bit more specifically, our marketing, we're looking to uh, market a product that's sleek and has a minimalistic design. And we tailor, tailor that to uh, active or sports involved people. Um, and also the packaging can be reflective of the purpose with having a no strings attached, um, feeling that sense of freedom. For promotion, we like we said, we'd be pushing to active people who enjoy music on the go, and we'd also be pushing to music lovers and music blogs to get the word out. Um, on top of that, we'd also try to get celebrities to back it, musicians, and then famous athletes. Uh, for a dist uh, distribution, just on top of everything, we would do online contests and marketing, active events, action sports, concerts, um, and then also we can combine the two and sell online through Apple and other retailers. So in conclusion, uh, by using some careful stages of creativity, we believe that YBuds is an extremely uh, public benefit, it, or it is a public benefit, but then it also solves a very personal uh, problem. Uh, also, we use design thinking to take a designer's perspective of how they would design and create the headphones. Um, so we want to keep it minimal and have it be very sleek. And then our analysis of the market feasibility has also uh, helped us gain a confident attitude towards entering the headphone market. <coughs> Who's going to count as the next person? Oh, yeah. 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 no, but also, you see the same thing. I think you should be carried in. Yeah. No, I think you should be carried in. Yeah. Are you talking about the Barcelona guy? Hi guys, yeah. my name is Josh, and this is Kyle, that's Marvin, and that's Susan. And 
let me explain to you guys how we came up with this idea. So originally, the parking app, the parking guide app, is my idea. But after like tossing around their ideas, um, Jesus had a, a bike rental program, and Kyle he had a Kyle had a another service that he had, and Jesus had a, a jersey exchange program. But the reason we decided to pursue my idea is because we realized that there's a real need for it. After not only have we experienced it ourselves, but we went out and did some customer interviews, and we asked SDSU students and other college students if they have problems parking, and sure they confirmed that they have a really hard time finding parking and not only in the beginning of the semester, but as time goes on throughout the semester. So to give you a little facts about SCSU, um, here's a video. I'm going to take it down. Yay, you've made it. You're now an asset, a brand new student at San Diego State University. But you're not alone. Thousands of others are buying for precious and few parking spaces. The problem is there are only 11 to 13,000 spaces. And thanks to city planners, there's always the trolley running underneath the university, this nearby parking either at Qualcomm Stadium or on Alvarado Road. So just what's the best advice? As you can see that uh, we decided to name our application Park It. And some of the strategies that we use from class that come up with this idea is, for example, the pen exercise that we did here along with the toilet. We put ourselves in the shoes of the consumer and ask ourselves, like, what if we had something? Like, what if we had something that would help us park easier? And we came up with this app. And the basic overview of this app is it's just a parking availability app, and it also provides you with lot and garage closers. And it's going to be mainly controlled by GPS. It's going to find your location, and then it'll tell you which lots around you. And it will also provide parking trends and up-to-date count of parkings and available garage lots of the school, like here at San Diego State University. So how it works basically is an app that's downloaded. From the app, it uses GPS to figure out which parking structure is closest to you that has available spots. When the lot is full, it's going to have the red. It's going to appear on the map screen red, meaning there's no spots. We decided to go with red and green because if there was a yellow in between, it kind of confused people. And just by using those two simple colors, it seemed more accessible for the user and easier for them to use. Uh, the changes we made to the original concept, as, as I said, was just limiting it to two colors and making it user friendly, less complicated and easier for the user to use. Uh, we narrowed the focus primarily to college students and universities. Even though there's a strong need for this type of program in any kind of level of parking, especially in the downtown area, whether it's sporting events, concerts, uh, any kind of big event. Uh, for example, as we were brainstorming through this, some of us have been to sporting events or concerts and have been able to find parking and actually had to go and turn around and go home. Even though we had the ticket, we couldn't find the parking because before we had nowhere, nowhere to go. And after mastering this application, we believe that universities will adapt to it. It will become the norm, and it will make it a lot easier for students to find parking throughout the campus. So getting started, first we will apply to the Thon Center. Um, if we get accepted to join, we will utilize, utilize our facilities and the human capital to create our first prototype. As you can see, um, that's the pump right there. That's the main sensor that will um, see if the parking spot is been utilized or not. Um, we will also use our legal knowledge to get our technology patented to create a barrier for entry. Um, the prototype will consist of the puck, gateway, network operation, and the adaptation. So the parking pucks will sense if there's cars in the parking spot. They will send a signal to the gateway, then from there to the network operation center, and finally to the user. So as far as testing, 
It is extremely rare that any designer will, will come up with a perfect solution the first time around. So in order to test the idea, we'll, we will conduct several cycles of testing and refinements. We will use trial and error until we achieve satisfactory results. Uh, the, uh, we will recruit a team of engineers so that they can experiment various methods until they arrive at, at, at a solution. After building a prototype, we will install one of these um, ser services in San Diego State University, and we will form focus groups uh, that will be formed of, of students so that we can examine their perception and opinions towards this prototype and app service. And aside from testing the physical prototype and the service, we will also test the business model uh, to prove that it is a viable one. We will ask students if they, uh, their opinions on, on value proposition, customers, key partners, and revenue streams. As far as implementation, we will also outsource the, the manufacturing because we want to focus more on the marketing, the advertising, distribution channels, and product development processes. Thank you. Who? So I would totally figure out how to make that puck show up red and then always have my free parking spot. Just put something on top of it. Right? Like a little foil over it. Yeah. Something to block that bad boy up. Yeah. <laughs> As a general rule, if you're going to present with a Mac, show up with your own Mac presenter, right? That little Mac connector thing. It just looks like an experience set. Because what happens if you're like, hey, I left mine at home? Yeah, but I don't know if you want to send me one of them, but then like then to respond. What if I didn't send me another remember to bring up the different one? No, I sent you my presentation on your email. But you wouldn't be able to present to it. Are you going to use this to present today? Yes. So why do you bring this? I was over my email and over my presentation. I know. You You're ready. You know, I really want to be an entrepreneur, but I want to work in the entertainment industry as I just pretty much have done that my entire life. But I just can't find anyone for their money. Have you ever heard of the Manager app? They have the Manager. Seriously, you should definitely check it out. Alright, let me check it out. Check it out. Look at that, a match. Oh my god, that Steven Spielberg movie was so hard to drag. I'm so glad it's done. Now I have all this knowledge to share. But, oh look, I have a match. Somebody wants me to mentor them to become an assistant director in the film industry. I think I can use my contacts at DreamWorks Animations to make their dreams come true. Yeah. Hi, I'm Sunny. I'm Jordan. Nice to meet you. Um, so, what are you trying to be? You yes. know, I just want to work in the entertainment industry. Well, we have an event coming up for DreamWorks Animations where we're going to have a bunch of directors, producers, everybody that's going to come. And it would be great if you could come and network with all of them and gain your chance to become an assistant director. <laughs> awesome. Well, that takes us to our app mentor. So my name is Zida Gopal, this is Anika, Jordan, Ophelia, and Angel, and we're presenting you the Mentor App. 
So mentoring is a beautiful thing. It is enriching for both the teacher and the apprentice to share a skill, to help someone fulfill their dreams. Any individual can have the power to teach or help someone getting better at, at something, um, from becoming better at piano, launching a company, how to draw, teaching how, um, another language. A mentor has also an important position um, because he needs to be confident in his apprentice um, to get to keep him motivated because learning is not always an easy thing. Um, but what um, the problem is that it can be difficult to find um, the right person that would be able to benefit from the knowledge of the mentor. So that's why we found the solution. So in the words of Oprah, a mentor is someone who allows you to see the hope inside yourself. So according to a research study that I found on USA Today, 22% of college students and recent college graduates actually have a mentor and the rest of those students don't. Um, the main struggle of the students that don't have a mentor is actually finding one. If you're part of an exclusive club, a business fraternity, it seems easy to come by them all the time, but you know, if you're not a part of that, or if you have a job outside of that, and you're constantly working or doing other things, it is really hard to find someone to mentor you. And having a mentor is not necessarily crucial to your success, but it will definitely increase your chances of becoming successful, especially if you have someone that is um, really proficient in the industry. And then with mentor, finding someone is only a tap on your smartphone away. So when one case mentioned the importance of a mentor and how his mentor really helped him uh, overcoming challenges and everything, I thought the idea was brilliant, but I didn't know who to meet or find to be my mentor. Would it be my teacher, someone that I know, someone that I would want to know? I didn't know. So that's why we came up with an app to make things easier. So. Um, so on the home screen, you can see that you can sign in with LinkedIn. This will uh, load your skills and interests on your profile. And we go to so then you just um, uh, put your skills and interests and put a small biography of yourself, who you are and what you're looking for, and you click on next. So let's say um, we are an apprentice and we're looking for a map. We'll, we'll be clicking on this uh, icon which will bring us to a suggested list of mentors that have the skills that you are looking for. Um, and uh, you can choose the mentor you want to uh, uh, browse, look at their profile, and see if they really fit with you. And if this is the case, you connect with them. But the great news is that you can be both. You can be either a mentor and as an apprentice at the same time. Um, let's say I'm a pianist, I'm a talented pianist, and I would like to give away my knowledge. I would be choosing this icon, which will be leading me to a list of apprentices. And here again, we can browse their profiles, see how they, uh, who they are and how they fit with you. And when you're re ready to take the next step, you land on the agreement um, page, and there is a little official uh, official thing that goes on, you get to say I do, and then you start your venture as a mentor and apprentice. So after time, that is how your profile will look like. You'll have your name and then your experience right here, depending on the time you've spent on the app and how many apprentices you've been. <coughs> you are either a mini mentor, a master mentor, a senior mentor, or a guru. Afterwards, you also collect badges, different badges, um, uh, depending on your um, time responsiveness, for example, or engagement in your relationship with your apprentice or mentor. And you can have a list of your mentors right here. And that's it. So okay. let's move on to the financial side. All right, so to discuss the financial aspects of this, you guys must be wondering how we're going to make money out of it. Um, at first, this app will be for free, so we just want to get as many people out there to use it, so it will be for free, but for every additional mentor after your first one, um, we're going to charge $5, and when it comes to the lifespan of like you know how successful you're going to be, I'm sure that $5 
will not really matter if you know you're like a big financial analyst making a lot of money. So um, another way we were going to finance it is by using banner ads. We know that pop-up ads are really annoying and we don't want customers to deal with that inconvenience. So we'll just have like one banner ad and um, after we see our projected sales and see how successful we're doing, if additional financing is needed, we will make the app cost $1.99 from then onwards. And to market our app, our first strategy would be word of mouth. So our team, whoever has designed this app, we will tell our friends and relatives, and hopefully they'll tell their friends and relatives to download this app. And along with that, we will use social media. Um, we will use Facebook ads to uh, market the app, and we will share a Facebook page. And we will also use LinkedIn, and we'll have a page for our app on LinkedIn where if you're a mentor, you can add it to your profile if you can say that um, one of my qualifications is that I'm a mentor and I mean that looks really nice on your application if you say that you're somebody that helps other people gain success. And along with that we will also use Instagram. We'll have an Instagram page where we'll have contests and we'll also feature like mentor of the day or something. And another marketing method is we're going to visit schools and colleges. There's a lot of high school students and college students that are trying to figure out what they want to do and where to go in life. And even if they have a certain path they want to take, it's hard for them to reach the right networks and actually know what steps to take in order to reach their goals. So if we go to classrooms and colleges and present our app to them and tell them to download it, hopefully they'll find somebody that will mentor them into the right direction. And another, our last method of marketing would be like to visit like tech festivals and stuff where a lot of um, app producers and um, app directors come together and we can network our ideas and you know share ideas. So that's our marketing strategy. Um, and now it's time for you to expand your ways. From now on, you don't have to give up your old um, dreams. Maybe you're working in a business or engineer field, not because you want it, but because you like um, compromising with reality. However, looking back at your childhood, you might want it to be singer, or photographer, or model, or something else. Why not starting again? It's never too late. Um, with this app, it's really easy to find a person who has knowledge or um, experience in the field that field of your interest. Also, let professional find you. Um, professional help you to discover and uh, discover your strengths or potential. There are a lot of professionals who want to donate their skills, but have never found any, uh, found anyone. With this app, it will benefit both mentor and mentee in respective ways. Start your mentor to today. Make your life more colorful and flourish. A real thing or just a project? Uh, we want to do it. Yeah, I can see how you can do that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I got some ideas. Yeah. 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 What about the Camp 25,000? <laughs> 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 I want to be on the I want to be on the prototype trip where we take it out to the woods. That's going to be paid for for the company, you know? Yeah. It's not too expensive. Yeah, yeah right? Uh, next. How many, like, raise your hand if you have your group has knocked on. Is everybody? Oh, there we go. All right, so let's do this. Man, this